Hey everyone, it's Gordon Einstein. Uh, I'm here in Monaco in the, the beautiful Fairmont Hotel overlooking the blue Mediterranean on a rainy day. And I'm here with my good friend, Juwan Lee. Juwan, I'm so happy to see you today. It's so great to be here, Gordon. This is, the, my, this is my man, this is my man. Of course, I just took the camera, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep that just because you know what, we're keeping it real. Um, so yes, very happy to see you. Last I saw you, of course, was Dubai. Yeah. But you got in late last night, I think. Yes. Uh, tell us about your travels and adventures and tell us about Africa. Oh, great. Uh, so first, let me tell you. My background is I spent 30 plus years as an institutional investor um, in many different strategies, but I would say largely in technology investment from Silicon Valley to uh, in terms of venture capital, hedge funds in Connecticut, and also asset management in Asia. What I did um, seven years ago, I started a company called NextChange, and we, we've been involved in the blockchain space for over seven years. And uh, we've really built a large ecosystem in Asia, and we're very much well known for having done that. And we use this ecosystem, which is a collection of very large scale events. And we uh, cherry pick and venture build projects all throughout the world. And just in, and the way Joanne and I met was you had a great event in Hong Kong. Yes. That I, you were nice enough to have me speak at. Yes. And, you know, then I became known, your illustrious presence became known to me. And, you know, I've gotten to know you over time. You're just a great guy. So, yeah, there are amazing events you host. Well, uh, clearly is doing the job. It's connecting uh, a lot of the pieces of the ecosystem. And I will just also say to you is that by having large scale events, always we're surprised by the unintended consequences of the marketing and the reach. Because oftentimes you end up with things that you have a strategy you want to happen, but so much of what's happening in blockchain is things you don't know about. Mm -hmm. And then because you have a very large reach, a lot of people reach out to me for very, very interesting projects. So uh, one of the things we, which we really wanted to focus on, which is the new frontier, is Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we did about seven, eight months ago is to develop a partnership with a local conglomerate called the Marita Group. And Marita. Marita. Okay. And we created a joint venture called Marnet, which is Marita Group and Exchange. Marnex blockchain holdings. So this uh, joint venture, the primary objective was to build blockchain out in Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a number of things we were gonna do, build an ecosystem, education, think tank, uh, venture building, and also venture investments. So our first project was Africa Blockchain Week. Mm -hmm. And why did we do this? And why do we continue to do these kinds of events? Well, first of all, I would like to say it was a virtual event because you can't do a live event in Africa at this moment in time. But what it did- Just out of curiosity, do you have any sense of when that will happen? Hopefully next year. You know, we, uh, and I'll share with you a little bit of the roadmap um, what happened because of the success of this event. So, it, you know, in this period of time where, you know, we planned this event, it took about four months to plan it. But what is an event? Why is it so significant? It's, it's a project management tool in many ways because you have a deadline. You can't go beyond the deadline. Mm -hmm. And what you have to do is you have to get speakers. These speakers are generally most influential people in the world about this topic. Mm -hmm. So we got a combination of the most well-known blockchain people on the planet mm -hmm. who are focused on Africa. And then we got African leaders. For example, we had... Chief uh, Mandela, uh, Mandela mm -hmm. speaking at our event. We had we partnered with the African Union, which made it a pan africa event. Mm -hmm. Ecosoft. We brought in a lot of interesting partners, and also we brought in twenty five media partners to really get the spread around. That's pretty. Okay. Yeah, you're, the event itself is fantastic, but then you really focused on outreach and getting the message. Well, the event, if you. We're not event organizers, we're ecosystem -based. So we have our main uh, strategic media partner was CNBC Africa. But we also got 25 supporting organizations. What do we mean by supporting organizations? We mean nonprofit organizations like, you know, the blockchain associations in Africa, mm -hmm. FinTech associations there, 
fintech and blockchain associations from around the world. So we brought in over 25 of these. Now, if you look at what we're building is going into the event, we're getting awareness to the most famous speakers about topics. We're, we're getting uh, media partners, we're getting uh, supporting organizations. We have an agenda that says these are interesting topics that should be uh, addressed in Africa. And there's a deadline. So you take this approach and it's, it accelerates. And people took notice. We were only, we, we were only expecting 2,000 people to attend. Over 10,000 people came to this event. It's the largest blockchain event in the history of Africa. I just want you to know, why is this important? Because we hit a tipping point. Can I get on sure, sure. So, uh, everyone out there, you, you, you know, you know me. I'm passionate about building the community around blockchain and crypto. And I'm, on one hand, listening to this, appreciating the event and everything you're saying. I'm, not, I'm also on the other hand taking mental notes about how I can up my game based on what you're doing. So I, I may, I may crib a couple of your techniques, but I love the idea of an event as a project management tool. It is a project management and, and, and the tool. deadline concept resonates deeply with me. Yeah, I got it. So one of the things that most of my humility, it's not that 10,000 people came and I, I pound my chest. It's more that 10,000 people came and say there is a new interest and movement out there. Yeah. We've hit the tipping point. And the amount of positive feedback we got from government, because we partnered with the African Union, the ministers, and the feedback, I have gotten more positive feedback from this event than any other event I've ever been involved in. Right. And we have done over 70 events in 10 countries and over 100,000 people have attended our events in the last seven years. So we're not new to this. We have built a community within blockchain space. Now, yeah. Isn't it kind of odd, for lack of a better word, that the, the one that had the most impact was the online one, given that everyone seems to be hungry for in-person events. Well, I mean, yes, yes and no, yes and no, because I will tell you, it's Africa. Mm -hmm. And the continent, Big. Yeah. there's restrictions. So we couldn't have had this, but most importantly, we wanted to not be political. We wanted to keep it very much about the technology and the movement okay. and, and so we, I think more importantly, isn't that it was only online and we got this response. The most important part of it is that there is tremendous amount of excitement because Africa, if they don't get blockchain right. Okay, you know what I'm doing about pounding yeah. the chip? Yeah, it's pounding the table out of excitement. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. if they don't get blockchain right, yeah. and if they get blockchain right, they'll be a generation ahead because they don't have all this infrastructure that's already been laid that makes it more difficult. They're gonna borrow and implement the best technology from the mo the latest providers of this technology. And one of the things that our Marnex joint venture is to bring the most amazing partners to Africa and implement the highest level technology because we can, there is an infrastructure there and we can build that infrastructure with them, with various different protocol level, level uh, uh, layers, as well as you know, adapts that go on top of that. You're obviously passionate about this and you have a history in it. Can you, I'm always curious, what was your epiphany moment with crypto and blockchain? I, I'm changing the subject a bit, yeah, but sure. I always like to know this. Well, I think the most important thing is that whenever you I always wondered, you know, did I get all this attention because I worked for the company? Or did I actually, can I do this on my own, right? So when we started uh, an exchange in 2014, what one thing we did get right was the timing. And you know how important timing is. Timing is almost everything. Yeah. So for the same reason, timing in Africa is very important because this two years too early, the worst type of timing is if you're too early. So where we were at yeah. is that um, I, I the think passion. Michael so, yeah. Turpin is sitting over there always yeah. says, you can tell who the first mover, you can tell who's moved first because they're, they're the ones with the arrows on their yeah, chest. Absolutely, the yeah. pioneers have all come. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, depends, it depends how brave they were or, or how fast they were to run away. <laughs> but, and we we don't just do blockchain, we're also involved in 
fintech industry, AI, health tech, smart cities. So we saw this movement, and it, it was not just a movement of blockchain, but the movement of, oh, it's okay to leave a large institution and do a startup. Right. You know, that wasn't even a, the case 10 years ago, okay? It was really, a, there wasn't this kind of thing. It was a kind of a combination of what we saw happening in the fintech, you know, development, and then also blockchain, all those things kind of moved together at the same time. Mm -hmm. So where I think the passion came from is, is the passion comes from having a, an idea and seeing it work, mm -hmm. timing, fuel the passion further. That was important for us. I like it. I like it. And just, what's, what's next for you? Well, next is just really what we're doing now. Um, so two, two parts of that question. What's next for you, like the geography? Sure. And then of course dovetail that with the, the general initiative. So the, the, the idea here is that uh, geographically within the blockchain space, right? Targets geographically within the blockchain space. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. That's yeah. like a filter of a filter. Well, it's a filter of a filter, but it's yeah. a niche that we buy. You know, we also have this available in, in Africa. We're going to be busy in Africa for a long time. And what I think is interesting is that people are reaching out to us. Mm -hmm. That's important. If we had just gone there with Marnax and said, hey, I'm here. Oh, by the way, we're going to build blockchain in Africa. They would say, who are you? Mm -hmm. By building this kind of initial layer of ecosystem, which we have to build much more on top of, this is just a... You're opening, you're opening campus. <laughs> it's just a starting line. You know, we, and, and, and by having that as our calling part, we're able to, you know, develop the right partnerships in place. I've seen this around the world a lot. It's, you create the ecosystem, you create the community, you start the conversations and then opportunities show up. And they're not necessarily the opportunities that you're looking for. In fact, it's very good to have an open mind. Absolutely. And just, let a green field or blue ocean, whatever the current metaphor it is, you just kind of you, you risk the mill, you pump, find the pump, whatever you want to say, and then yeah. the neat things show up, and you just talk to people. It's, it's yeah, one of the things I, I have, or you've created, and you did a whiteboard analysis, and you said this is what the future, this is what our plans are, and then when the actual reality of the execution, it doesn't look anything like that, right? I've given up planning. Yeah, you know, right? yeah. planning. <laughs> Is I was planning up until 2021, and then you know, man plans got lapsed. So, yeah, adding to the plan as you get more input, then it starts to refine itself. But I think what we are seeing here is this what's next? What's next is that there is an infrastructure role that needs to be laid in Africa. Physical infrastructure layer, or how do you mean both? Physical infrastructure layer in terms of data centers to allow for the this kind of storage. Okay, Africa, you know, part of the term is a greenfield, and and it's not just oh go in there, you know, it's yeah, it's not go in there with uh, amazing protocols and let's just put blockchain everywhere. Actual data centers. Are we also believe that you know money is nowhere near in terms of accessibility for the unbanked where it should be. One of the great things about the NFT market, and I'll give you a completely different use case than what we are seeing, it's not about the multi-million dollar art, art uh, auctions that are taking place in the NFT. But if you can think about this, if you can sell a piece of art in Africa for $1,000, yeah, a lot. And you, a lot. A lot. Okay. On you know what is uh, what is Africa? What is blockchain? It's for the people, by the people. Okay. Important. There's a lot more to discuss. I just this is a flash interview format. Uh, yeah, both sure. here in Monaco and you know yeah. doing a lot of stuff. I want to join Lee. I want to thank you so thank much you for having me. I'd like to say is great because the people need to know on the thoughts and mind in a format that's very casual. That's me, casual. I like it. Um, and of course, I'll, we'll create some show notes. We'll have links to all Juwan's projects and him and his background. So bear with us. And because it's a very casual show, I will now hit the end of the recording on my Zoom. So again, thank you.